definitely some people here earlier uh, that kind of sleep in the park. They're homeless. A woman and her kids. So while we were out tonight, Sang Lai said, well, let's get them some food at least. Make sure they have something to eat. So we stopped at a little uh, restaurant, one of our little favorite mom and pop restaurants. Sorry this is so dark, but uh, I don't want to get up close. I'm not trying to exploit anybody, but uh, but they were hungry. Sang Lai came up with the idea, so kudos for her, but really thanks to you guys. Everybody who supports me. We do this thing uh, whenever we can, whenever we have the extra money, that's where it goes. But I really have to hand this thing live. She really uh, likes doing that kind of thing. It makes her, gives her the warm and fuzzies inside. <laughs> and of course, it's all thanks to your donations. But it's not all bad news. We're down here across the street from the Royal Gardens. This is like a gathering place at night for people. It's been empty for almost two years. But as you can tell, seeing Reef is coming back alive. Kids on roller skates, kids playing in trees, people exercising. Over there playing a, a local game called Sai, Sai or Say. I forget how to pronounce it. But uh, walking around, got skateboarders over there. Of course, in the background, you can see the flashing lights of the bridge over the river. So, yeah. This is all uh, pretty exciting. It's nice to see CM Reap coming back alive. And I hope it continues that trajectory. What's up, guys? And welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. On this lovely, lovely day here in uh, Siem Reap. Late afternoon. About 4.30. And to me, this is like a perfect day. It's uh, There's not much of a breeze. But the sun's not being too, too bothersome. Nice shade everywhere. To me, it feels like a very nice spring day back where I come from in Michigan. These kind of days are nice. Cambodia has, has, has had a, a cold spell going on, which could continue through the rest of the month. Some temperatures in some areas are getting down to 16 degrees Celsius, and that, my friends, is a Cambodian winter. <laughs> People uh, get really cold. Uh, Textile manufacturers have uh, produced more winter-like jackets for citizens. And the government has encouraged those with relatives living in some of the uh, northern regions especially to be sure to uh, get warm winter clothing to all their relatives, especially the older ones who live there, because for them it's going to feel much, much colder than the actual temperature. Of course coming from the west to me it feels as I said like a nice spring day but anyway I want to thank everybody that bought my three book uh, special I have three books for sale I put them all in one bundle and uh, there's 24 hours left if you're watching this early tomorrow unfortunately the deal goes away Normally they're $10 each, but I put all three of them in one pack and you will receive all three for any donation of $10 or more. And you can do that right below my PayPal address. Under the message part, be sure to put your, e your email address so that I know uh, where to send a copy of your book once you do that. And if you just want to buy me a copy, that's cool too. Go to ko-fi.com. That link is down below. And no matter which one you choose, you'll be put on my list to receive all my weekly exclusive content, including at least one video a week and any breaking news that could affect you here in Cambodia. 
you'll receive it before I make it public. Any, every donation is appreciated. We love you guys. We appreciate you supporting the channel. Now let's get on with the video. So, as you're probably aware by now, uh, if you're coming over here to Cambodia to work, the main source of income for foreigners is teaching English. It's uh, very popular here because uh, English teachers don't need a bachelor's degree. You simply need a, a TEFL certificate as a minimum requirement if you don't know TEFL stands for teaching English as a foreign language and that will provide you an opportunity to work in Cambodia and make some money if that's something you're interested in there's a link down below for the the TEFL course I went through I highly recommend it they're accredited internationally recognized so even if you don't plan on coming to Cambodia you'll be able to use this in any country you do go to it's the International Temple Academy I left the link down below if you're interested in talking to a representative before you make a decision and uh, feel free to ask them any questions you have but what if you don't want to teach English what if you don't want to actually work, but you want to be active when, uh, during your retirement? Are there other things besides uh, teaching English here? And the answer is, uh, yeah, of course. I don't know much about the processes for getting these kind of uh, positions, but I'll tell you what I know in this video. The first one I want to talk about, and this is going to be, depend on a couple factors for you. If you're a retiree just looking for some way to volunteer without having to teach English, or you're just somebody who likes sports in general, that could be something you could do here. Uh, if you're of a certain age like I am, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really a sports guy. I, not athletic in any way. And the only sport I really liked to, to watch back home was ice hockey. But <clears throat> if you're a sports minded person and you want a way to, to give to Cambodia, you don't want to teach English, then sports could be the way to go. Uh, baseball, basketball, volleyball. Uh, maybe American football even. The good thing about Cambodia, or one of the good things about Cambodia, it's a very youthful country. I've read that about 60% of the population is aged 30 or younger. Um, and as to be expected, when, you're, when you have a country full of young people, a lot of young people are interested in sports. Uh, but some of them that we may we might be familiar with back home are not readily available here. They aren't taught. Uh, they don't know much about them. And I've known expats who have started their own uh, like baseball leagues in different cities that didn't have a a baseball program. Now, uh, generally, most well maybe not most, but a lot of sports. Even Western sports are recognized somewhere in Cambodia. But the main one uh, is, of course, uh, football, which would be, we would call it soccer, but over here it's football. And uh, that seems to be the number one people are familiar with. They have, uh, you know, they have their favorite team, favorite players, all that good stuff. But, 
teaching a sport, coaching a team, starting a, a league perhaps even, whether it's on a volunteer basis or you want to get a work permit and do it for, for a fee, something like that. Is, uh, would probably be very much appreciated here. Because not only do people get to learn about uh, a different culture, they get to learn how to play as a team, they get to play a game they never played before in a competitive atmosphere. And of course, because it's such a useful country, they're very, uh, very energetic. And uh, I don't think you'll have any problem getting together a group of kids or even young adults who might want to learn how to play baseball or basketball, who have never played before. You could be the coach, you could be their leader. And like I said, you can do this on your own time as a volunteer. I mean, sometimes retirees, you know, they work for 40, 50, 60 years, then they retire and uh, they might get bored after, after a while. But this would be a good way you can give something to the youth of Cambodia. You get to keep your mind active. You don't have to be in the best shape to coach, you know, you just have to have the ability to want to teach people. And explain how it all works and that might be a good option for for some of you you could also teach different trades uh, one of my subscribers has told me a few times that uh, they have technical schools here trade schools where they have people that hello I am making a video say hello to YouTube yeah he says hello he said, what are you doing? But yeah, technical schools and trade schools. Everybody has a skill. And there could be schools here looking for a teacher to teach those skills. Something like welding, electrical work perhaps, carpentry maybe, woodworking. But think of all the possibilities. Even, even if there's not a school looking for a paid teacher to do those things. If you're not looking for a job, but just looking for a way to volunteer, you could offer any skill you have and uh, create a class around it for people. Start your own Facebook page for it. Uh, have people sign up. Go to the classes. I've known people here who have taught everything from yoga to meditation to Tai Chi to... Uh, well, I already mentioned the sports, but somebody here started a... a a volleyball league and they did it all voluntarily so it wasn't a job they didn't do it to make money and uh, but it kept them busy and they're all very happy with the results and again it's one of those things if people here have a chance to learn a new skill you, they, they will take it generally they will especially if it doesn't cost anything and money is not a factor. They just get to go and have fun and learn something new that they might be interested in. Uh, they're very willing. It's one of the advantages, as I said before, of having a youthful country. Uh, because of that, they're very interested in learning things. They're very, uh, very interested in knowledge. So if you're not a sports guy, you don't want to teach English, you have some skill something you can offer and I think you'll see you get a lot of satisfaction out of teaching whatever you know watching the progress and know that you've done something good for the community and the country and the third thing you could do is uh, start artistic teaching I know I'm not an artist. I have a very hard time creating a art as in, you know, paintings and drawings. And, but I'm always uh, 
fascinated with people who can look at a blank canvas, some brushes and some paint, and just go to town and a few hours later have something beautiful for people to look at. That kind of perception, that kind of eye. Uh, I have a good deal of respect for those people. But I don't have that skill. Oh. Huh? Sugar cane juice. Ah, that's what it is. Sugar cane juice. Oh, okay. I'll take it. Okay, I'll take it. Very refreshing. Or maybe cooking traditional dishes where you come from. There's another thing you could teach people here. That would require some money for the ingredients. Especially ingredients that might not be local here. Might be a little expensive. Uh, but it, ended, it, it is an option. You start your own little uh, foreign cooking school. Now, you know, there are cooking classes around here. That you can take as a foreigner to learn how to cook traditional uh, Kamai dishes. And in the same respect, there might be a certain amount of people who want to hone their skills as a cook or a chef and learn some traditional dishes from your country. You might have that skill. You might be able to help them out. And what better way to spread love than through food? So yeah, when people ask, uh, well, I don't want to teach English, uh, but I'm not really sure what else to do over there. I would say that uh, those are just a few, a few of the many things you could teach here without having it to be English, without having to uh, have a, you know, a, a work permit if it's on a voluntary basis. And it's a way to keep you and your mind and maybe body occupied if you get the case of the boredoms. And I'm uh, always happy when I see people putting ads in different groups saying, hey, I want to teach uh, this. If anybody's interested, come and sign up. Learn. People can learn new skills, new ways of doing things perhaps. And you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you taught them that. Lifelong skill that they'll have because of you. All right, yeah, we are in the Sasamaki market. Crazy here with all the motorbikes, but I wouldn't have it any other way. There are. Always lots and lots of choices here. Nice looking eggplants, cucumbers. This is one right off Highway 6. On the opposite side of the road, a uh, little bit before you get to the biggest local market in town, Salu. This will be called Sasamaki. Should be on your Google Maps. Oh, and I do have a story to tell about an injury from a foreigner. Uh, met up with my buddy Stevie, Stephen C. And he was telling me a story about somebody from his in-person TEFL class. The other night, they were at a certain uh, restaurant here in town. And uh, guy was walking out of the bathroom. There was a piece of metal that was protruding, protruding from the wall that he did not see. And he cut his big toe. And it was bleeding kind of bad. Well, they didn't know what to do about it, but there was a clinic right up the road. So they decided to go into the clinic. He was a little bit worried he might have to use his insurance to take care of it. But all told, it didn't need stitches, but what they did, they gave him a tetanus shot. They gave him some sort of a IV. Not sure what, but some sort of IV. They bandaged it all up, cleaned it all out and everything. And how much do you think the total bill was? His insurance had a $250 deductible, but uh, this only cost him a whopping total of $8. And uh, I know, speaking of from back home, walking into a clinic back there with the same thing, uh, you could have expected to spend about 
you know, anywhere between five and eight hundred dollars <throat> for the same thing. So eight dollars is actually a very good price. Looks like we're getting some chickens. We're making some extra now. Uh, give to that lady and her kids in the park. They seem to be there often, and when we can, we like to go down there and help out. But eight bucks, that's a that's an incredible deal. All right, that'll do it for this one. Thank you guys for joining me on this walk. I hope that answered your question. You know who you are. And uh, remember to check out all my links down below. You can donate to PayPal, ko fi.com, or join my Patreon. All those links are there for your perusal. Other channels vlogging around the area, they're all listed down below. I encourage you to check them, check them out. Give them a look, give them a like, give them a subscribe. you find some really good information there. And also, since if you were one of those that stuck around this far, I want you to know my blog is back up. I started a blog two years ago. I couldn't figure out how to do anything, how to make any changes on the site I was using. So I put one simple post up there and then called it quits. And then, frankly, I forgot about it. And then all of a sudden I get an email reminding me, you know this is here. What do you want to do with it? <laughs> And I was like, I forgot about that. So I went back and checked it out. I did some work on it today. Put up another post. And uh, my Dave Ducks Cambodia official blog is back up. I'll be posting a few times a week. And I'll be writing about things I don't talk about here in the video, perhaps. Because uh, when I'm out walking and talking, there's a lot going on. I'm trying not to get run over. I'm trying to watch where I'm going. I'm trying to keep my thoughts together in some kind of coherent manner. Which often doesn't work, I understand. But uh, <laughs> when I'm writing, I have a chance to think about what I want to say in my thoughts and put it all together in a more organized manner. So be sure to check it out. It says, you know, right under the link that says Dave Does Cambodia Blog. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you have not done so and uh, share it if you want. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.